Konnichiwa Min san, it's Gray from Makazashi's Tea House Home in Japan. How are you doing? Are you good? Are you Genki? I'm pretty good, thanks. Okay, I've got a review today of this Amazing Spider Man issue 15, part of the Dark Web event, which is, I think it's going over about uh, 225 and a half issues and tie ins. Completely meaningless, but anyway, what are you going to do? It's written by Zeb Wells, it's got art by Ed McGuinness coming in this one, so no John Romita Jr. here. And. Yeah, as I say, I don't even know what part this is of Dark Web. It's part whatever. I um, I didn't bother reviewing the last issue, issue 14, because it was a Spider-Man free issue. It's just um, telling the story of what's been happening to Ben Riley recently. And you know what? I don't care. I don't care about Ben Riley. If you've been watching my channel and my Spider-Man reviews for, for a while, you'll know that I've come back to Spider-Man after years away, a long time. I was reading it back in the, the days of the the proper Peter Parker, Mary Jane wedding, remember that? And the original Venom appeared. Yeah, right back then, because, you know, I'm old, look at me. So I thought I'd give it another chance, you know, come back to what started it all off for me, back to Spidey, when I heard they were relaunching it to volume seven, is it? 75? 77 and a half? Could be. And Zeb Wells is writing with John Romita Jr. doing the art. So yeah, the first five issues intrigued me. I thought, this is pretty good. I like the, the coverage of Tombstone. I like the kind of street-level hero style to it. It was a bit brutal. It was a bit like, you know, Spidey was getting his ass handed to him all the time. But, yeah, I was, I was into it. And then they did um, some kind of completely different story for the next issue, issue 6. So it was, I think it was issue 900 officially, the legacy issue. Then they did some weird tie-in to an event that had finished three months or four months ago. And then another tie-in to another event, which I wasn't reading. It could have been, was it the Hellfire, Hellf, <laughs> can't even say it, Hell, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Hellfire Gala event, it could have been, maybe not, I don't know, I don't even care. Anyway, um, I dropped out, as I say, last issue didn't even bother reviewing. Now, this issue, it's back to Spider-Man and I saw Venom on the cover. So I thought, okay, let's give this a shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of scroll through the issue. I'll, I'll put some images on, cover my pretty face up. And yeah, just tell you what it's like. Is it any good? I'll tell you what, if you like cartoony, manga-influenced art, I think you might enjoy this. Ed McGuinness, I, I remember him from doing event the Avengers like a few years ago, and I thought it was pretty like a serious style, but this is very cartoony. So we open in New York City and they're under some kind of attack. It could be gargoyles, it could be seagulls. No, it's just a joke, isn't it, by Zeb Wells. We get to see a baby stroller turning into a weird little shop of horrors monster trying to eat the baby, but then don't worry, it's a web, so that means it must be Venom. Venom, your lethal protector. Who are you expecting? And guess what? The couple with the baby call him Spider-Man because, you know, Venom's only been around for like 40 years. Anyway, we've got Venom saying all he wants to do is eat Spider-Man's brain, so please tell Spidey he's coming for him. Then we get our first view of Spider-Man. I think it's four or five pages in, and it's a nice exposition dump by Zeb Wells. Let me read you some of this dump if you don't mind. Not a great day, to be honest. New York City's possessed, and the last time this happened, the X-Men stepped in to fix it. Then we get a reference to way back in Inferno. Didn't read that. No idea. Next box. I just left them at the Rockefeller Center, and if they know what they're doing, they're hiding it well. <laughs> That's another bit of Zeb Wells humor there for you. And then we get a reference to, don't tell me you missed Dark Web issue one. Sorry guys, I did. I couldn't be bothered with it. Then we get this. Come on Spidey, let's tell the readers what's going on and what's been happening just in case, you know, we can't actually write that. Now I'm trying to get across town to Norman Osborne. He sent me a broken distress call, which is bad because he's one of the only ones who can help me figure this out. When did Spider-Man Peter Parker get stupid? When did he start to rely on Norman Osborne? Do you know? I don't. So I've got no time to ask questions about the ear-splitting screams of a bunch of tied-up Christmas trees. Don't you just love this Zeb Wells humour? I don't. Okay, we get a little jokey reference to, as I say, like kind of monster Christmas trees, Dean Koontz novels flying through the air, Mary Jane, listen to this. Spidey says, Norman helped me when I lost Mary Jane. Do you know what? 
I've no idea what that's talking about because there's been this reference to something huge that happened between Peter Parker and Mary Jane six months before the series started. And then, since then, nothing. Just, oh yeah, Mary Jane's got two kids now and she's either married or seeing some guy called Paul. Okay, then we get a view of... I think this is Ben Riley, who's now Chasm. Hey, Peter, your boss slipped and fell. <sighs> Anyone idea who this is written for? Kindergarten? Ben? Please, I'm working. Call me Chasm. To be honest, he looks like a purple Power Ranger, but is it? maybe it's just me. Then we get a bit of dialogue. Peter seems happy that Ben's okay. And then suddenly, from behind, hee-hee-ha-ha, <laughs> it's... Lethal Protector Venom from the 90s, grabbing Peter Parker, ready to eat his brains. Eddie, says Peter. No, we are Venom. We could get a fight scene, but we don't. We get a really jacked up looking Venom with his tongue touching the back of Peter Parker's head. You want to eat my brains? Too bad. Then we skip to Chasm and we got Miss Marvel for some reason talking about beating up her boss. No idea what's going on about that. Find out how. Oh, here we go. We get a reference to Dark Web, Miss Marvel, issue one, which is out next week. Not even out yet. There you go. So, you know, you need to go traveling into the future to find out what she's talking about. Quite a nice image here of Venom smacking Peter Parker, Spider-Man, because Spider-Man just keeps getting beaten up through this series continuously. This is easier than we thought, says 90s Venom. Maybe your brain is so small, we'll eat it in one bite. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, I love this humour. Then we switch to J. Jonah Jameson looking out at madness on the streets, saying, Christmas is cancelled. Of course it is. Oh, now Chasm's in his office with his feet on his desk. Then we jump again to Spidey stealing a ramen ninja comic book. So it must be volume 17. It's a manga. He steals it. You know what he does with it? He sets it on fire. And he lights up those monster Christmas trees to scare Venom. Then he can punch Venom, knocking the symbiote costume off Eddie Brock. Then we get some... I don't know who even know who this is. To be honest, I don't care. She looks a bit like a, a sexy looking Mary Jane in a, an X-Men style killer costume. And we get Spidey saying, Wow, you really do look just like Jet, J-E... Jennifer, Django, Jenga, Jezebel, no idea. Hello, Peter. Where were we? To be continued. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed my review. Let me just give you a quick shout, um, heads up about the dark web event. So here we go. We had the prelude issues, Amazing Spider-Man 14, the Ben Riley issue. No Spidey was in there. Didn't bother with that. Venom issue 13. Then we get, this is a proper issues of dark web. There's dark web one, which I skipped. Amazing Spider-Man 15, this issue. Amazing Spider-Man 16, it'll be out in a couple of days. Oh no, sorry, a couple of weeks. Amazing Spider-Man 17 and 18. And then the Dark Web Finale, issue one, for some reason. Tie-ins, here we go. Four issues of Gold Goblin. Venom 14 and six, sorry, Venom 14, 15, 16. So three issues of Venom. Three issues of Mary Jane and Black Cat, a brand new series. Mini series, of course. Two issues of Miss Marvel, Dark Web. And then three issues of Dark Web X-Men, Volume 1. So that's what? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15 tie-ins. Plus the six main Dark Web issues. That's 21, if I can do math, not really. 22, 23 with the preludes. 23 issues. So, okay, I was exaggerating with the 254. But I was close, wasn't I? So... I hope you enjoyed a rare, sarcastic, kind of pissed off, had enough of this review from Grey, Wakizashi's Tea House. And um, I hope to see you in a future video. I promise I'll be much more Genki in the next one because I won't be reviewing Amazing Spider-Man. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a comment. Let me know how insane I am, how stupid I am, how much you disagree with me. Tell me why. Tell me why Spider-Man's good, why I should continue reading it because I'm really sat here scratching my head. Okay, but well, seriously, thanks for watching, and I, I always appreciate your comments. I will answer every single one, and see you very soon. Matane. Wagisashi's Tea House. Please subscribe. <laughs>